We're in Las Vegas, Nevada for the 2007 FIBA Americas Championship. The USA national team continues their quest for qualification into the 2008 Olympic Games. After taking care of business against Venezuela last night, the USA looks to keep on rolling tonight. Some new but familiar faces headline this team as they try to improve upon recent international results. The U.S. Virgin Islands providing the challenge tonight as pool play continues. The Arabian Strip of Las Vegas, Nevada, a glow at night, a place where extravagance is the norm. Tonight it's about extravagance and basketball excellence on the basketball court. The Virgin Islands taking on the United States. A look at the pool standings of note today. Argentina, the defending Olympic champs, winning their first game of the tournament. And also Canada winning today. Puerto Rico bouncing back with a win as well over Panama. Here's what's at stake. Over the next 10 days, these 10 teams will play over 40 total games. When the dust settles, two teams will get burst to the Olympic Games less than a year away in Beijing. And Kobe Bryant celebrating his 29th birthday today. The birthday boy, just one of three big cogs in the huge wheel of success last night. Bryant making a very auspicious debut for Team USA. Always a great idea, Mark, to play well on the eve of your birthday. Kobe Bryant kicking the ball ahead. LeBron James unstoppable in transition. But with Carmelo Anthony's relentless attack on the offensive glass, the team from the United States was able to completely dominate following up with spectacular plays that led to crowd-pleasing finishes at the hoop. And the numbers for Carmelo Anthony, Kobe Bryant, and LeBron James, particular attention to the top line, very limited minutes, and in a tournament where you have to play 10 games in 12 days, Coach is gonna need these guys throughout. Their numbers were more than enough to rout Venezuela. A portrait of efficiency, those three. Meanwhile, a face for the Virgin Islands that a lot of collegiate fans in the United States will recognize. Carl Krauser gonna be playing the point position for the Virgin Islands tonight. Krauser, out of pit, led his school to four appearances in the NCAA tournament, a very feisty competitor. The New York City native, who also spent a lot of time in the Bronx, has spent some time as an amateur boxer. This is the guy that they're gonna be counting on for the Virgin Islands to try to slow down this express from the United States. The Virgin Islands, they'll have their work cut out for them tonight, Mark. Okay, let's take a look at our starting lineups presented by State Farm for the United States. It's the exact same starting five as a night ago. Jason Kidd and Kobe Bryant in the backcourt. LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony on the wings, and Dwight Howard getting the nod in the middle tonight once again. He had 12 points and 8 rebounds last night. Meanwhile, a guy that we're going to have to keep an eye on for the United States Virgin Islands, Frank Eligar, the six foot nine inch 20 year old in the middle has been the team's leading scorer of late. Mark Eligar is the one player on this Virgin Island team that the United States coaching staff thinks at one time in the future will have a chance to play in the NBA. Eligar, just 20 years of age. They are a little bit undersized though up front. Here's a look at some of the significant differences between NBA basketball and international basketball. They play four 10 minute quarters in international FIBA basketball. The court is actually a little bit shorter and of course they use the trapezoid shaped lane as opposed to the rectangle which we see so often in the NBA. And that trapezoid shaped lane is, th is 71 square feet larger in international competition. The goaltending rule, which allows players from either team to swipe the ball off the rim once it hits the rim, unlike the goaltending rules from the 1950s, which allowed players to actually go up through the rim and knock it out, that is no longer legal, thank goodness. That's part of the game, the FIBA game, that Kobe Bryant and his teammates are still getting acclimated to. It's tough to break out of those old habits when you're playing one style of basketball for most of the season, most of the year. There's Dwight Howard, who last night had 12 points to go along with eight rebounds in the victory over Venezuela. The starting center for the Orlando Magic and starting center for the American Senior Men's National Team. As we are set to get underway here, this is the first meeting between the U.S. Virgin Islands and USA since 
They met in 2003 in the Tournament of Americas in Puerto Rico. And we are underway. Jason Kidd out top. And it looks like the Virgin Islands are coming out in a zone here. Good idea. Something that Venezuela didn't do at all last night. But once again, the United States pounding that ball inside, capitalizing on the remarkable talents of Dwight Howard. And Howard will go to the free throw line, earning two shots. Dwight Howard averaged almost 18 points a game and 12 rebounds with the Orlando Magic this past season. Continues to elevate the level of his play, and he was a, a vital part of what they did last year at the World Championships as well. Dwight Howard, who got his feet wet last year, but as the tournament evolved in Japan, it became much more of just an individual type of game, and as the United States ultimately went down to Greece the big guys Dwight Howard among them in particular was left out of the flow and there we've got just a, an example of maybe one of the soft spots in his game he sometimes is known to struggle at the free throw line the United States shooting just 69 percent from the charity strike last night in their win and LeBron James with a steal gets it back from oh, kid oh. great passing and Carmelo fouled at the rim and he earns two free throws that's where the United States will out talent other teams most of the time in transition bill two possessions and two trips to the free throw line great ball movement it never touches the floor and lo and behold there's Carmelo Anthony once again always able to fill up the stat sheet running the floor when it appeared as if it would be LeBron James and Jason Kidd all by themselves but this guy Carmelo Anthony can really play Carmelo last night at 17 points against Venezuela He's USA Basketball's Athlete of the Year, based uh, mostly on his wonderful performance in the World Championships, averaged almost 20 points a game, and he made the uh, all-world championship team first team. Mark, there was no shoot-around for the United States today. They took the morning off, although they did have their customary meeting, and that's where all the players were made aware of Kobe Bryant's birthday today, and <laughs> they were all feeling so sorry for him about getting so old at 29. <laughs> what do you give a guy that uh, seemingly does? have everything as uh, that was Kevin Shepard driving to the cup and getting the bucket to fall you say seemingly everything Kobe yes. may be the best player in the history of basketball to never win the most valuable player of the NBA interesting there's Dwight Howard knocking it off the top of the rim perfect example of that goaltending rule that's allowed once it hits the rim it is live for either team Dwight Howard missing the easy layup inside Virgin Islands with an opportunity, dare I say, to take the lead here, Bill. The United States has never trailed in this tournament. After getting out to a 9-0 lead last night against Venezuela, that game never in doubt. And Virgin Islands with the lead after that bucket by Jason Edwin, the 6-foot-5-inch 26-year-old, averaged six points a game in the recent Pan Am games for the Virgin Islands. Underneath, Carmelo Anthony with a nice layup and a sweet feed out top. While the Virgin Islands team does not have the talent that the United States has, they have the experience. Almost their entire roster has played college basketball in the United States. And uh, five or six of their players went to four years of college. And the only player on the yeah. U.S. roster that went to four years of college was Tayshawn Prince, who's yeah. coming off the bench. There is a definitive New York type of feel to the Virgin Islands team. Several of their players played high school basketball in the area and Carmelo Anthony knocks down a three-pointer the USA leading seven to four and Carmelo Anthony has all seven points for the United States the United States shot 38 percent from behind the shortened arc last night 62 percent the USA from uh, two-point range that time Reimer had it knocked away the defense by the United States and LeBron James finishes with the flush Mike Miller, good to see him in uniform tonight. He was the one concerned with the tweaked ankle last night. Reports from Las Vegas here, and the coaching staff is that Mike Miller will be fine. Traveling violation is a perfect example as to why you don't jump in the air to pass the ball. Good steal there by Kobe Bryant to start the transition, Bill. One of the great things that Krzyzewski has at his disposal is that all of these guys can handle the ball. <laughs> Ron hammers it home. And the United States now leading 9-4. to four. 
which one of these Virgin Islands players is going to be able to break down the United States defense. Underneath, and one opportunity coming up. Get Juana Reimer, the six foot ten inch, twenty nine year old, muscling inside. LeBron James with a nice show and go for the baseline slam. LeBron last night had eleven points against Venezuela in limited minutes. Really, everybody will play limited minutes on this roster for Shashevsky. They've got so many weapons. And that's one of the reasons why they're the prohibitive favorites, not only to win this tournament, but to win the Beijing gold as well. Here's LeBron on the wing. There was a little bit of talk about him perhaps not playing this summer. He and his uh, girlfriend recently having their second child together and uh, whistle underneath after the Kobe Bryant jump shot. But LeBron, like so many others, giving up their summers selflessly and honoring the three-year commitment that they made to the... USA basketball program and here back once again if, if they had beaten Greece a year ago in Japan They wouldn't have had to play yes. in this tournament. They would have already qualified Howard comes up with the steal Jason Kidd Looking for the push Carmelo Anthony Converting with the three and it's 17 to 7 Carmelo on fire here early They have turned the Virgin Islands over bill four times already uh, the Virgin Island team, they are ranked 38th in the world. Venezuela, 21st. And, but already the Virgin Islands look better tonight than at any point for Venezuela last night against the United States. And on this move, it's Jason Edwin with the drive-by and the N1 opportunity coming up. Well, two three-point play opportunities already for the Virgin Islands. Watching Kobe Bryant play defense on Edwin that time, brings back what we were talking about last night and that you know Kobe Bryant went up to coach Mike Krzyzewski prior to the tournament during training camp and said I want to cover the best offensive player on the other team that we face in every single game and Krzyzewski was even saying after last night's victory that you have to be impressed with the tenacity that Bryant showed on defense here's a guy that's that's had five or four 50 point back to back to back games when your best players are your hardest working and most committed team players in the tradition of a Michael Jordan, a Larry Bird, a Magic Johnson, a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the greatest players in the history of basketball, it makes everything very easy. Michael Red from behind the arc. It's his 28th birthday tomorrow, so we'll have to see if they'll milk the juices there. <laughs> be a lot of birthday cakes uh, in the locker room. Well, there was no cake. I was surprised. Oh, yeah, he's on that diet now, Kobe, right? He can't touch cake. That's out of bounds. You can have a <laughs> a good, healthy piece of carrot cake, maybe. Okay. Without yeah. any frosting. And, uh, Dwight Howard feasting on the Virgin Islands underneath with that block, and he comes up with another one. LeBron, what a great tip. A three-on-one. <laughs> great teamwork, and the slam by LeBron James. They transition from defense to offense in a blink. And the United States leading by 10. United States razor sharp right now. Everything going well. Taking advantage of not having the morning shoot around. So they come out fresh, ready to explode. And Dwight Howard is everywhere. Eligar's jump shot is no good on the turnaround. Here's Red. Michael Red had a very productive night. Had 17 last night. Carmelo feeling it. Boy, they were holding Dwight Howard with everything but handcuffs that time underneath as Virgin Islands called for the foul. The tip out by LeBron who races up the floor and Michael Red just lays it up there for the flush finish. The United States is razor sharp. Everything going well. And Carmelo Anthony is coming up the court just thinking shot from the minute he crosses half court. Michael Red, meanwhile, knocks down a jump shot. That's his first field goal of the game. And uh, Michael Red, we said it last night, along with Mike Miller of the Memphis Grizzlies, two key additions for the United States roster build because of the fact that we're going to see a lot of zones. The United States will see a lot of zones when we face the, the Serbias, the Spains. And this is why Michael Red is in the roster and on the lineup. Michael he knocks Red down another one. It's been the surprise of the camp on both ends. He is showing why he is. United States best shooter 24 to 9 the United States out to another early lead LeBron James eye to eye with the rim 
He's got his pilot's license to fly back after this. It's the second game of the Tournament of the Americas for the United States, and they are a perfect 1-0 so far. This is their second game against the Virgin Islands, and so far off to a good start, Bill Walton, shooting 75% from the field, 9 of 12. Carmelo Anthony, the team's leading scorer, but Michael Redd has been the big story on the last couple of possessions. He has scored five consecutive points. Michael Redd would have been on last year's team, but he was excused because he was getting married. He's a career 39% shooter from behind the NBA arc, had a career best 27 points per game in an injury marred season for Milwaukee a year ago. Jason Kidd comes up with another pinch for the USA. The United States is up in the passing lanes. They're not worried about getting backdoored. They've got Dwight Howard behind them. If he's not out there, they've got Amari Stoudemire. Amari Stoudemire's not out there. It's Tyson Chandler, who played the fewest number of minutes for the United States last night. What Ten happened? minutes for Tyson Chandler. There's that zone defense. Attacking it in. And while some would say that Michael Red's presence on the team last year, they wouldn't even have to play this summer, one of the arguments against that, Mark, is that... I happen to agree with that, by the way. But... Will Michael Red be on the court if the game is really tight? Who's he gonna? You gonna take LeBron out? You gonna take Carmelo out? You gonna take Kobe out? And Michael Red is not the ball handling type of guard. Well, you know what? If you're looking at a, a Spain or a Serbia or a Lithuania, a team that's gonna pack it in with big people underneath, I, I think you have to have a shooter like he or Mike Miller on the floor. And if this truly is a situation where the stars, the Quasars like Kobe, like LeBron, like Melo, are to subordinate their egos a little bit, no, it won't be a problem, right? You go tell those guys that they're <laughs> sitting on the bench. <laughs> but our congratulations to Michael Redd, who, uh, who was the 43rd overall pick in the 2000 draft. He just two years ago signed a six-year, $91 million contract. And you got to love a guy who buys his father, a pastor, by the way, <laughs> a brand-new church in Columbus, Ohio, with some of the proceeds of that brand-new contract. The United States leading 26-9. to Outside shot, no good. Rebounded by Dwight Howard. Jason Kidd attempting the bounce pass out of bounds off of the Virgin Islands as Stoudemire and Billups get set to check into the ball game. And don't forget that FIBA America's championship action continues Saturday at 3 o'clock Eastern time. The United States takes on Canada. Canada winning today against Venezuela, bouncing back. But the bad news for the Canadian squad there is that Leo Routon's son, Andy, injured his knee. He tore his ACL and his MCL, and he will be done for the entire tournament and will miss his upcoming season at Syracuse as Michael Red knocks down his second consecutive three ball. How sad for Canada because things start getting tougher for the United States after the preliminary games against Venezuela and Virgin Islands, uh, not traditional powers in FIBA basketball, but Canada ranked number 16, Brazil 17. Tomorrow, the first day off for the United States, and then it starts getting serious. Red again. Michael That's Red fire. feeling it. We are seeing a team, the United States, that is so focused, so determined. One of the things that's really got them going is that Jerry Colangelo has wisely brought in Spencer Haywood as sort of a, a legend and a host for the whole tournament. And Spencer is there in, uh, at all the games, all the functions for the team, and he has really become a mentor to a lot of these players. Spencer Haywood, the youngest player to ever represent the United States in the Olympic Games. That was 1968. Barely edging out LeBron James from the Athens games just three years ago. There you go. I knew that wonderful Walton trivia was just around the bend. USA leading 32 to 9. And in a very staunch man defense still. Edwin's jump shot is off the mark. Rebounded by Carmelo Anthony. The United States doing a nice job on both ends. The offensive and defensive boards of Michael Red electing to drive it to the bucket that time, and he's fouled on his foray to the cup. And all of these players who 
never went to college, they should be personally thanking Spencer Hill, maybe even giving them part of it, their pay. I know where you're going on because this. Because he's the guy in 1971 when he sued the NBA to allow the underclassmen, because there used to be a rule that before 1971 and the successful lawsuit by Spencer Hill that you had to have gone to four years of college before you could enter the NBA and my how things have changed. <laughs> Michael Red, meanwhile, knocks down the free throw. Red averaged almost 27 points a game this year with the Milwaukee Bucks and already has 12 points. The meter still running with 2.17 to go here in the first quarter. But Michael suffered that devastating left knee injury last season. There was a meaningless dunk he threw down with only 14 seconds to go against Cleveland and LeBron in early January in a game that was already decided they were losing badly by nine points and he went to throw one down and he strained that patella tendon in his left knee. So yeah. Sure seems fine right yeah. now. His stroke's okay. Mike Miller, another dead-eye shooter in the ball game and Virgin Islands finally getting a bucket. That was Jameel Haywood, the 6'6", 30-year-old who averaged 5.6 points a game in the recent Pan Am competition. LeBron taking a break on the sidelines the United States leading 34 to 11 at stake here two spots to the Olympic Games when the dust settles on September the 2nd the United States has never lost in FIBA America's championship Michael Red driving that time and he's fouled by Carl Krauser there's Carl Krauser who played at Pitt for four years out of the Bronx New York you think back to some of the the days when the college guys used to play against some of the other countries, Bill. And I remember watching a game in particular, 1976, Butch Lee lighting up the United <laughs> States. And I'm saying to myself, I don't remember Butch Lee being Puerto Rican when he was playing for Marquette, but he had roots in that country. The eligibility rules are always nebulous <laughs> in international competition. And while Tim Duncan was born in the... Virgin Islands very few of these guys representing the Virgin Islands today were born there but at some point they had to have some relative in their ancient lineage that allows them to qualify as a representative of that spectacularly beautiful Caribbean <laughs> island archipelago that, that consists of 60 plus islands the main ones being St. John's St. Croix and St. Thomas pass batted away underneath Saw Michael Red get a breather on the bench. Chauncey Billups in now, along with Stoudemire, Mike Miller, and Tayshawn Prince. Here's Miller from outside, and Miller gets on the score sheet in the blink. 39 to 11. The last time, the only time that the Virgin Islands have played the United States, the game that Tim Duncan voluntarily stepped aside for, the United States won by 58 points without Tim Duncan. But my sense, yeah. I was part of it. He was a little self-conscious, didn't want to play against his countrymen. Understandably I think so. I think it's a tremendous gesture to say, hey, look, that's my country. I don't want to go out there and pound them. But my sense is that Tim Duncan did not have a good time at the Athens Olympics. And as it's moved on and they've won more championships uh, since then, and, uh, I'm not sure if we're going to see Tim Duncan in the international competition anymore. I think he's done. He's done his job. Sadly, he did not get the gold medal that all these players so desperately crave. 39 to 13, you speak of the adjustments to international officiating. Tim Duncan in particular had a tough time with some of the calls made against him in Athens. And when you look at the tape and remember the games, you, you understand perfectly why. Darren Williams kicks it out to Tayshawn Prince. But this team has much better chemistry. Not only player to player chemistry, but player to coach chemistry. Here's Krauser. Krauser kicks it back out. Krauser, they call him Black Magic from the Rucker Leagues in the streets of New York. Here's Prince with the rebound. You have to be impressed with, with the job Shashevsky, Nate McMillan, Mike D'Antoni, and Jim Beheim, the coaching staff for the United States has done here to get these guys so well prepared in a game where they pretty much think 
We're going to win this one. The United States three-point marksmanship tonight has been on point as Chauncey Phillips knocks down another one. You're watching the 2007 FIBA America's Championship from the Thomas & Mack Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. The entertainment capital of the world and an entertaining one so far by the USA. Back with more right after this. Back at the Thomas & Mack Center, the first 10 minutes of the first quarter in the books, the United States leading 42 to 13. They were sizzling from the field, 76% shooting, including eight of 10, Bill Walton, from behind the three-point arc. And that is a tremendous sign because last night they were 38%, which is a very good number, but even I, with my limited mathematical skills, can figure out and read the graphic that 8 for 10 is 80%. But last year, when the United States lost to Greece in the semifinals of the World Championship Tournament in Japan, they only shot 32% as a team in going down in monumental fashion to a red-hot Greek team. Virgin Islands with the ball, the jumper off the mark by Edwin, but he's fouled on the attempt. And getting back to that three-point shooting by the United States, Bill, as Darren Williams whistled for the foul, there's a bit of a rub there because, yes, it is a shorter distance, 20 feet 6 inches, as opposed to 23-9 in the NBA, but you can almost fall in love with taking it too much, can't you? And that, that's the lure. That's what happens in college basketball all the time. That's pretty much a layup for anybody who's got a game whatsoever. I'm a big proponent, Mark, of standardizing all the rules yes. with the globalization of the game. But then you're talking about kingdoms, fiefdoms, giving up their power, giving up their identity. And with the NBA becoming the dominant force in every aspect of basketball, you have all these other entities saying, hey, we want to continue to receive our level of recognition, credit, respect, and cash dispersion. Yes. Capitalism, one of the themes <laughs> worldwide, as Chauncey Phillips was fouled going to the bucket. 42 to 15 with 9.28 to go in the second quarter. The United States will get the day off tomorrow, then resume against Canada. A game you'll see on ESPN, 3 o'clock on Saturday. Mike Miller has it swatted away. Williams goes to Omari Stoudemire. Stoudemire working the baseline and coming with the hammer. Little tap to finish it off on the glass. No stopping Amari Stoudemire as the United States has already just moved out to a nearly incalculable margin. And I think we have to start looking at record-setting territories for most points scored in a quarter, in a half, and quite possibly for an entire game because they're on a 168-point spread right now. And certainly the fans would love to see that in a game played without paul westhead coaching wow great extrapolation too bill your math <laughs> unbelievable <laughs> 44 to 15. i do and know I, one part of math that 40 minutos de infierno means 40 minutes of heck nolan richardson is yes. coaching the undefeated mexican team right now he's got them playing down there they beat puerto rico in their first game yesterday and looked very impressive doing it they were in charge for most of that game and here's one more look at Amari Stoudemire who says along with his assistant coach of the Phoenix Suns uh, Phil Weber that he's adding a three-point shot to the arsenal that he's seriously been working on this summer this time Amari underneath fouled and he'll get two at the free throw line Stoudemire saying that he can envision himself being get this Bill the most improved player in the league next year as well as finals MVP wonderful lofty aspiration i would love to see that be the most MB the most improved and the mvp and another all-star and a league title but i do not want to see him ever take a three-point shot why it's not his game his game should be underneath the basket they've got three but your feet they've got steve nash they've got raja bell who's not playing tonight because he's not on the roster we just had knee surgery six weeks ago on the virgin we, islands yeah right and we really hope that raja is going to be all right by the start of the regular season for phoenix phoenix is an unconventional team though doesn't that give them that much more of an added dimension to have your big be able to step out and shoot threes? They need low post presence, <laughs> Mark. I mean, come on, enough of this Kevin Garnett saying <laughs> okay. I'm a forward. He's a center 
Amari Stoudemire as a center. Get down there. Men are made in the paint. Oh, you're so conventional. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> Carl Krauser with the jumper from outside makes it 45 to 18. Here's Mike Miller back the other way. Tayshawn Prince. A little two-man game here. Weak side with Williams. Good ball movement by the United States. And even though Miller can't cash in with the jump shot, they showed a lot of unselfishness on that possession. Here's Krauser for the Virgin Islands. Carl Krauser took Pitt to the NCAA tournament in four consecutive years. It's a three-on-one. No help for Krauser there as he watches Miller on the left-handed layup. But a nice job by the United States coming back, realizing that when there's only one defender back, keep the ball on the sideline. When there's two defenders in a fast-break situation, then you keep it in the middle and get to the free-throw line. Chauncey Billups just exquisite at running that break. On the baseline, nice move by Victor... Guthbert Victor approaching seven minutes to go here in the first half the United States in control but they've slowed down offensively they had 42 points after the first 10 minutes and now four minutes in into the second quarter they've only scored five points total that they got that every 30 seconds in the <laughs> opening quarter well, that's what happens when you set the bar pretty high in the first 10 minutes inside Ball knocked away, and then the Virgin Islands get it back. They're trying to go inside to Kidwana Reimer, and it's knocked away by Stoudemire. Well, the WNBA playoffs continue Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN2. Game 2 of the Western Conference matchup between the Sacramento Monarchs and the San Antonio Silver Stars. Two of the best players in the WNBA matchup as Kara Lawson leads the defending Western Conference champs, Monarchs, against Becky Hammond and... Uh, Homestanding Silver Stars, the WNBA playoffs on ESPN2, and what a difference Becky Hammond has made this year. A lot of people speculated that that trade to San Antonio from New York wouldn't benefit her, but it has been a blessing for both as Williams converts off the transition. And here I thought it was the time Becky spent as the sideline reporter <laughs> on the men's game. All that insight, huh? Season, this past season's <laughs> NBA. 49 to 20, the United States in control. But the Virgin Islands part of the Greater Antilles chain of islands. They're located just east of Puerto Rico and about a thousand miles south of the furthest south point of Florida. Which makes for uh, an easy hop on a plane if you live in South Florida like yours truly. Here's Jason Kidd bringing it up court. A 29-point advantage. Kobe Bryant's been conspicuous by his silence, and Tyson Chandler gets on the scoreboard, which he failed to do last night in the game against Venezuela. Chandler brought in to add a little size and shot blocking for the United States. Chandler, the only player for Krzyzewski's USA team that did not play in the first half last night. Krauser with a nice move off the dribble to get the open pass and shot good by Jason Edwin. And what the advantage of the, all the depth does for the United States is that nobody has to play too much, whereas every other team with the limited roster capabilities, they're having to have a grind-out struggle every single night. And the Hall of Famer, Mike Krzyzewski, who's been coaching U.S. national teams since 1979, this guy has a roster that anybody would just salivate over. Brain trust on the USA sideline. Very impressive. The jump shot off the mark. And it Chandler even, with the rebound. And it doesn't even include Chris Bosch or Dwayne Wade, who are both out with injuries. Darren Williams on fire right now. And speaking of Dwayne Wade, spent a little time with him a couple of weeks ago down in South Florida. And Wade recovering from surgery to his knee and his injured shoulder. The dislocated shoulder that he suffered in February against Houston. Says the shoulder's coming along fine along with the knee. And a jump shot good from the top of the key by Reimer. And Wade expects to be back in action on the court somewhere probably around the first week of November, maybe a few games into the regular season. Time out on the floor. We'll be back with more after this. Welcome back, everyone, to the Thomas and Mack Center, the FIBA Tournament of the Americas Championship. The United States leading 53-25, to and the emergence of Carmelo Anthony continues to be a big storyline. He has set a pace that no one else can match offensively. Now, Carmelo Anthony is one of only three players on the U.S. squad who played on the world championship team that won the bronze medal. LeBron James, Dwight Howard being the other two. 
Carmelo Anthony also the only player on the U.S. roster who has an NCAA championship. Kobe Bryant, the only player who has an NBA championship. He's got three of those, courtesy of Shaquille O'Neal. As uh, Carmelo form a little triangle with Bryant now on the low blocks, Kobe Bryant. A little bit off the mark that time and rebounded by the Virgin Islands coming back in transition. It's Edwin. A little bit of complacency setting in, a little bit of relaxation after the blistering start. The United States scoring 42 first quarter points. My mathematical calculation shows that they've only scored 11 since then. There's Jim Herrick Sr. who is the father of the assistant coach for the Virgin Islands, Jim Herrick Jr. The last time uh, we heard a lot about the, the Herrick family was when they were coaching together at Georgia. That ended not so well. Now they're coaching together for the Bakersfield team in the NBDL. Can't believe you didn't use the prefix UCLA well, legend. He, he coached UCLA okay. to its last okay. NCAA was waiting. championship in 1995. <laughs> Jim Herrick and the head coach to Vester Anderson. Things didn't went, end it well at UCLA for Coach Herrick either. 3 to 27. Vester Anderson, the head coach of this Virgin Islands team, has been their head coach dating back to 1985. Jason Kidd. Hey, who says that you can lay off Jason Kidd? Knocks down the perimeter jumper, makes it 58 to 27 now. But, but how about Jason Kidd? Last night, plays 15 minutes and doesn't take a shot. It's everybody else going. Just a dream point guard like Steve Nash, like Magic, like Lenny Wilkins. This has no interest in statistics, no interest in individual glory. It's all about the team with Jason. Carl Krauser gets hammered to the floor by Tyson Chandler. Let's get back to that Jason Kidd thing. Okay. We've all seen scouting reports that say you can lay off him a little bit. In the international game, next year, the United States say hypothetically playing against a Spain. Are they going to drop off him? Can you leave him out there with in Jason, that scenario? With Jason Kidd, it's a day-to-day -day adventure on the jumper. The rest of his game, the defense, the rebounding, the passing, the intensity, the intangibles, it's always there. But some days, he looks like as great a shooting point guard has ever played and other games you say this guy can't even make a layup and it's really remarkable because we've been watching jason since he was uh, a high school player in oakland california and the fact that he hasn't been able to become a consistent shooter it's it's mind-boggling to me because we know so well how hard this guy works at every part of his game and and I'm intrigued to see if that's going to be the story. Oh, beautiful back cut pass. Kobe Bryant rejected at the rim. But Carmelo Anthony just zipping that ball in. Have to be impressed with the way that they're moving the ball, Anthony, going to the free throw line. But one of the limitations on LeBron James's game at this point is the inconsistent outside shot. And if Jason Kidd can't do it, that means that there are some guys who never get to the point where they can knock it down. Will LeBron James be one of those guys? Or as his game evolves, will he become one of the premier perimeter shooters? Meanwhile, Jason Kidd now 29-0 as a member of the U.S. senior national teams. Remember, he was the captain of the Olympic team back in 2000 that won gold in Sydney, Australia. And this was the last yep. successful international competition for the United States. And it was interesting that in the initial meeting back in July when the team got together for three J's of minicamp, Jerry Colangelo stood up and spoke to the team en masse and said, hey, there's only one guy in here with a gold medal. And he pointed at Jason Kidd. He pointed out that Jason was undefeated. And Jason kind of only half-jokingly turned around to his teammates and pointed to them and said, hey, don't mess around with that record. Dwight Howard committing the foul on the play. 3.09 to go in the first half. But Jerry Colangelo, who's the head of this whole operation and, and project for the United States to try to get back to their rightful position, as he points it out, 20 years ago, Jerry Colangelo, after founding the Phoenix Suns in the late 1960s, Jerry Colangelo bought the entire team for $44.7 million. Just this past June as he walked out the door as the head guy for the last time as Robert Sarver takes over on the purchase price of $401 million. That's quite an appreciation. Ten times 
in 20 years for the Phoenix Suns. What a franchise. It's a return on investment for sure. Three on two. Carmelo fouled and won. Anthony hacked by Eligar, and he'll get a chance to complete the three-point play off the good feed. Right now, this USA team is a monument to unselfishness when it comes to ball movement here. LeBron with a look away. Well, all of the key guys really like passing the ball. Now, we're, we're, that caveat has a exemption with Kobe Bryant, who's never been accused of looking to give it up out there. Now, whether playing with Jason Kidd and LeBron and Carmelo will change that remains to be seen. 61 to 31, under three minutes to go here. I'm Mark Jones along with Bill Walton. The second game for the United States in the Tournament of the Americas. Last night they defeated Venezuela. Tonight on the docket, it's the Virgin Islands, and here's Kobe Bryant. The Virgin Islands, which were named Las Islas Las Virgenes by Christopher Columbus back in the 15th century, because they named the Virgin Islands after St. Ursula in her 11,000 virgin companions and followers. So congratulations to St. Ursula. I'm just still impressed with your Spanish. It's wonderful, <laughs> especially the uh, 40 minuto di inferno, the 40 minutes of heck. And uh, so far, this Mexican team actually, one of the coached by Nolan Richardson, one of the good stories, feel good, warm and fuzzy stories of this term tournament of the Americas as Shepard goes to the free throw line off the foul. Spanish is my sixth language oh. after stammering stuttering <laughs> stumbling <laughs> spitting maybe a little bit of broken english and then spanish having grown up on the california mexican border right there in san diego 61 to 34 there's a look at uh Tavester anderson on the right and jim herrick senior on the left Tavester anderson the current head coach at jackson state where Lindsey Hunter played his college basketball under a true legend, Andy Coughlin. We hope that Andy Coughlin is doing well in retirement. But there's a man down for the Virgin Islands. Can the United States capitalize? Five on four. They go inside to Dwight Howard and wisely. The Virgin Islands committing the foul. It's going to go against Kidwana Reimer. And you had brought up the name Roger Bell a few moments ago when referring to the Virgin Islands. Roger Bell was born in the U.S. Virgin Islands, eligible to play but underwent surgery some six weeks ago, recovering, recovering on schedule, but unable to take part in this competition. One of the advantages that the Virgin Islands has, uh, as say opposed to Venezuela or Uruguay, is that they never get to play against the real top tier United States players. But these guys playing college basketball uh, throughout the United States and then going home to reunite uh, for their country the Virgin Islands the mystique is not there that so many of the international players have when they come up against the United States as super elite players for the very first time as we come in at the under two minute mark of the second quarter Howard makes one or two free throws to make the margin 62 to 34 if you've watched some of the play here so far you'd have to say that Maybe the only two teams that are going to give the United States a run would probably be Brazil A and B, Argentina. Brazil had the day off today after defeating Canada yesterday. Argentina played its first game and won against Uruguay. LeBron looking pretty good so far. Back after this. 136 to go in the first half. The United States in control, 62 to 34, but the Virgin Islands, Bill Walton, outscoring the United States 21 to 20 so far in the second period. The United States offense has ground to a halt. And some of that is the sense of relaxation after the tremendous spurt at the beginning that got the huge lead. But this United States, they have to find that level of self-motivation, drive and determination that ignores the opposition and then just goes out and tries to play against an ideal standard of perfection. Carmelo Anthony continues his pursuit of that. Carmelo Anthony, one of the better mid-range shooters in the league, has that great little jab step series, Bill, and used it effectively that time to give the United States a 30-point lead. Anthony with 15 on 5 of 6 from the field, 110 to go here, and that's going to be a foul underneath against the Virgin Islands. Now, 
in FIBA basketball rules, much like the NBA, you shoot the penalty on the fifth foul. And there's a look at the foul underneath against Reimer. But you don't shoot offensive fouls at any level of basketball at all. So sometimes in the NCAA level, it's very confusing as to how they allow offensive fouls to be committed while still scoring a basket. And Carmelo Anthony going to earn himself, Bill, another trip to the free throw line that time. One of the great stories about the Virgin Islands is Walt Frazier, who easily one of the 50 greatest players in NBA history. Walt Frazier, the guy who authored arguably the greatest seventh game in the history of the NBA playoffs. When Walt retired back in the late 70s, he invested in a, a, a franchise in the short-lived U.S. Basketball League, and he moved to the U.S. Virgin Islands and obtained a charter boat captain's license. But then when Hurricane Hugo came in 1989 and wrecked everything, destroyed his home, destroyed his business, he came back and became the television analyst on the Knicks broadcast. But now he still has a bed and breakfast, Walt Frazier does, in St. Croix. And it is truly a spectacular place in our congratulations to Walt for truly using basketball to make a better life for himself rather than letting basketball use him. That guy is as great a champion who has ever lived, Walt Frazier. Pretty uh, innovative thinker. And I just really dig the hats that he used to wear back in the day, <laughs> frankly, Bill. 65 to 34 with Kevin Shepard at the free throw line, the 27 year old. Uh, Averaged about five points a game in the recent Pan Am games. The Virgin Islands, uh, Bill, coming off a very significant victory a few months back and for one of the first times in a very long time, I want to say ever, defeating Puerto Rico. And a lot of the players felt buoyed by the confidence that they gained in that. And uh, for them, a small, tiny island nation like the Virgin Islands to defeat Puerto Rico, somewhat of a, a giant on the big picture landscape, uh, was a big accomplishment for them. It's a very similar program where so many of the players go to college in the United States to learn how to play, but they don't have the population that Puerto Rico has. Puerto Rico is a major, major island of, of one huge one. Uh, but with St. Croix and St. Thomas and St. John literally having maybe 50,000 people per island, all the rest of the little K's and islands, uh, literally nobody on them. Uh, it, you're talking a couple of hundred thousand people to draw from uh, from your talent pool. Mike Krzyzewski watching as Dwight Howard commits the foul. You were talking about the upcoming competition with uh, Argentina and, and Brazil. Brazil looks to be the best team uh, outside of the United States in this competition. Uh, Argentina, they're missing their top five players. And if you look at it from a big picture point of view for Argentina, it appears that they're just trying to rest their guys, their key guys, Ginobili, Nocionis, Oberto, and get ready for next year. That can be kind of perilous, though. I mean, that's uh, when you're trying out on the last chance, like next July, when the, if they don't make it here, have to qualify next summer, that can be kind of tenuous. But the third, fourth, and fifth place finishers will receive automatic berths to next year's pre-Olympic qualifying. They get rested, they, they come in fresh, they play their NBA season this year for Chicago and San Antonio. Carlos Delfino, he's hurt right now. He's playing for Toronto. The half ends in the United States. They're going to hear it from Mike Krzyzewski about the letdown here as the second quarter was very competitive, unlike the first. And Carmelo Anthony doing a lot of the heavy lifting early in the ball game. 17 points and five rebounds as the United States takes a huge lead into the locker room at halftime here at the FIBA Tournament of the Americas. 66 to 39. We'll be back. The bright lights of Las Vegas, Nevada. Look at the strip downtown. City that never met a hotel they didn't like. <laughs> and they're building a new arena there. <laughs> At least one, maybe two. We'll get into that in the second half. 66 to 39 as we get ready for the start of the third quarter. Time now for the AT&T highlights. LeBron James along the baseline. Nice defensive rotation by the Virgin Islands. But then, but the, 
USA team out in transition, everybody getting involved, the touch passes back and forth. Once again, LeBron throwing it down. Movement without the ball was exemplary. The camaraderie between LeBron and Carmelo Anthony, who's able to finish strong at the hoop despite the foul. Both teams getting to the free throw line and able to convert there. Look at the big three, Carmelo Anthony in 13 minutes got 17 points. Kobe Bryant with a quiet five tonight, but he does have three assists. LeBron James with 11 uh, minutes on the floor tonight and six points and not shown up there on the screen. Michael Red had 15 points. All 15 of the points, Bill, coming in the last part of the first period. He had a three and a half minute stretch where he had 15 points. That is Wilt Chamberlain-esque. But then we never really saw him again as Krzyzewski has such a arsenal to draw from and he's not going to wear anybody out because not only do they have to play 10 games in 12 days there's an nba season that starts their training camp on october 1st and these guys have obligations there as well well the united states not the only team getting ready for major competitions participating in other games spain recently playing against germany and uh, juan carlos navarro now the memphis grizzlies leading the way with 18. dirk Nowitzki had 14 points france defeating portugal tony parker back from that ankle injury he had 21 points boris diaw got the team's insurance and clearance to play from the suns he had four slovenia defeating italy andrea barniarni uh so coming back from a uh, actually lithuania pardon me defeating italy uh, Barniani coming back from a back injury, but getting back to Spain real quick, right? Some interesting news today out of Toronto. Jose Garbajosa will not be allowed to play. The Raptors not clearing Jorge Bar Garbajosa to play because of that somewhat gruesome injury that he suffered against the Celtics earlier this year. Hopefully, Garbajosa will be able to get all the way better, but it's going to take a long time. These injuries are just brutal. Those scores were from a friendly series of tournaments. The European qualifying, which is going to get underway shortly in Spain, uh, is, is the European counterpart to what we have here in Las Vegas, the FIBA Tournament of yes. the Americas. Uh, Euro Eurobasket getting underway September the 3rd in Spain, and uh, the Spanish team and some of the team players from Spain that I've had a chance to speak with really looking forward to uh, getting things back to where they were a season ago when they won the world championships and doing it on home soil. They play a beautiful style and they were able to win that championship without the services of Pau Gasol who had broken his foot in the semifinal match but Greece after beating the United States Greece they failed to show up in the gold medal game. And that's being nice. Here's a look at the teams that have already qualified for the Olympic Games. China gets in as the host nation. Spain gets in as the winner of the World Championships last year. And Iran winning the Asia zone uh, because China already got in. It's only a 12-team tournament. So nine spots still to be determined. And you would have to think that the United States would get one of those. But when you look at... The Virgin Islands first half scoring, Krauser, we've talked about him at the top. He led the team with nine. Edwin had nine as well. Shepard had seven. Reimer had seven. And with the Virgin Islands outscoring the United States in the second quarter by 226-24, you have to believe they have the confidence right now to try to make this a more competitive game. LeBron James with great defensive rotation coming up with the steal. Kobe Bryant with the reverse. And Kobe with some pyrotechnics on the reverse layup. 71 to 39 we talked just a few moments ago about how he had a pretty quiet first half but Kobe Bryant celebrating his 29th birthday today with a sweet layup for the score Kobe. and we talked about yesterday Bill the fact that he has really dedicated himself to getting in prime condition Kobe Bryant look at him folks he has lost 18 pounds since the end of his regular season with the Los Angeles Lakers he uh, says, uh, interesting, he talked about mortality a little bit, said, hey, you know, I'm getting, I'm pushing up on 30 now. The metabolism isn't what it used to be. And Kobe Bryant has always been the type of guy, admittedly, that has been able to get away with eating whatever he wanted to. Pizza, ice cream, hamburgers, all the fun stuff, Bill. But now it's a steady regimen of uh, baked chicken and fish and, and greens. But a year ago, he professed to have bulked up to carry a heavier load. This year, it's a different story. And, and that's really been the story of Kobe Bryant's career. Every single season, it has been some other focus, some other 
outside element that's defined who he is and that's one of the major reasons why this at age 29 is the first time he's ever been able to put on the United States jersey. Kobe Bryant recently and within the span of 24 hours this summer said that first he wanted to be traded by the Los Angeles Lakers then recanted the majority of those statements and during the course of this USA senior men's national basketball team camp and tournament he has refused in large part to comment on that situation not wanting to detract from the focus here for the American team. I can't imagine the Lakers trading. <laughs> Who are you going to get for him? Not value, that's for sure. Well, maybe Steve Nash, but Steve is well into his 30s. Tim Duncan, San Antonio's not trading him. LeBron James, is, is Cleveland going to trade a, a, a six or seven year younger LeBron James for Kobe Bryant, who might not enjoy making that move from Los Angeles to Cleveland. Here's a look at the foul called against oh. the USA. Kevin Shepard driving to the bucket. But that was tremendous defense by LeBron James on the wing. Kevin Shepard, the 27-year-old, averaging five points a game in the recent Pan Am games that they played in. Played professional basketball this past season in Venezuela, as well as Argentina. Played his college basketball at Jacksonville University, same place as the legend artist Gilmore. Quickly up court, the United States, and there is the Phoenix Suns influence that Mike D'Antoni perhaps has imparted on the USA. The fact that they won out after a make, Bill. How interesting, though, for all these players to come and play in this wide-open, freelance style. I'm shocked that this basket doesn't count. <laughs> it might have in the NBA with the N1. And then from this, under D'Antoni and Nate McMillan, the, the, you know, the NBA guys, then they go back to their regular teams and their coach is saying, slow it down. Call some plays. <laughs> Kobe fouled on his move to the bucket. The United States national team continues pool play in the 2007 FIBA America's Championship through this weekend. Join us Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2 as the United States takes on Canada and finishes out pool play on Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. That's the big one against Brazil. All games also available on ESPN360.com. It's the 2007 FIBA America's Championship on the ESPN family of networks. That Brazil game going to be very, very interesting. They've got Nene and Leandro Barbosa both playing for Brazil. And uh, Thiago Splitter has looked particularly well so far. A big man, about 6'10", uh, an NBA draft pick by the San Antonio Spurs. Uh, Splitter played his European professional basketball in Spain. The arguably the best league outside of the NBA bill. It used to be Italy, but it's shifted over to Spain. And uh, Splitter, uh, as Kobe Bryant, <laughs> was serenaded by the fans on his 29th birthday here. It is so nice to see Kobe smiling. But people raving about Splitter. I have not had the privilege of seeing him play yet, but uh, all the coaches for the United States just saying, this, this guy, he has really been a force. And Leandro Barbosa, I mean, who had 30 points in their first game uh, for Brazil. Right now, Bill, the, uh, you can pick up the vibe a little bit. You hear the chorus, the fans uh, moments ago singing happy birthday to Kobe Bryant. On this, the day that he turns 29. Good defensive help by Dwight Howard. And here's the United States in transition. Jason Kidd back to Carmelo Anthony. Inside, Howard fouled. And, and speaking with some of the players, they say that Dwight Howard is quote unquote they've got new vernacular he's beasting people he is just a beast inside and brings up a point that we were talking about during the break bill interior scoring the United States was hurt by interior scoring against Greece in the loss last year in the world championships conversely does the United States team have enough of that interior scoring at the other end? This is not the type of roster, big man-wise, that has players in the lineage of Wilt, Kareem, Shaq, Akeem Olajuwon, four of the five greatest centers to ever play basketball. These players are... Now, throw Tyson Chandler out, who's not an offensive factor at all. Okay. But Amari Stoudemire, Dwight Howard put up good numbers. But they're more dunkers. They're more finishers off other people's creativity. 
These are not the type of players, Howard and Stoudemire, who you just say, okay, post them up, give them the ball, run a post split on the ball side, run a down screen or a back screen on the weak side and say, okay, let's run our offense through that. And that could very easily be a liability for this United States team. Oh, that shot. Bang, bang, <laughs> Victor knocks it down. And there are going to be times, maybe not this tournament, but next year in the Olympics, provided the United States earns one of the two spots here, that they might have to throw it down on the block and get something out of a, a Dwight Howard or an Amari Stoudemire. But it's emblematic of the decline of the big man in basketball in general. Anthony with the bucket. And with Dwight Howard and Amari Stoudemire both choosing to forego an opportunity to play college basketball, Tim Duncan, the, the great big man, he had the greatest big man in the game today, along with Shaquille O'Neal. Between the two of them, they had seven years of college basketball. Four for Tim at Wake Forest and three for Shaq at LSU. And Jason Kidd knocks it out of bounds off of the Virgin Islands' Elliger. And it's coming back the other way to the United States. Jason Kidd. Once again, ubiquitous. He is everywhere. <laughs> and that pass was everywhere. <laughs> Passed it to himself. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Kobe from downtown. Coming up a little bit short. Out of bounds. It's been a slow night offensively for Kobe Bryant. There's Tavester Anderson, the head coach of the Virgin Islands. Currently the head coach of Jacksonville University. Kobe seems a little bit more determined to get some shots up in this third quarter. So he's had a pretty good trigger. And here he is with Jason Kidd on the break. He put that off the board. LeBron James <laughs> with a finish. You can see that coming. The lead is 34 points for the United States. Cruising once again. Jason Kidd poking it away. Boy, Jason Kidd filling his hat with steals. Kobe had it knocked away by Carl Krauser out of bounds. It'll be United States basketball. This is a team certainly lethal in transition as shown there, but what happens, the question begs, what happens when a team limits possessions because of the shorter clock? It's only a 40 minute, 40 minute game as opposed to 48. What happens when you've got a shorter game? And a team that shoots the ball well, which neither Venezuela or the Virgin Islands have done. There's another lob pass. That one for Dwight Howard with the slam. We've got about eight or nine screensavers slash sports <laughs> center moments already here in the ball game. Crowds are a little bit strong. Kid on the push. I'm excited about looking at the opportunity of Dwight Howard playing for Stan Van Gundy, who I think is just a, a, a top tier coach. A new coach in Orlando. They're going to get a new building down there. So everyone in, in Central Florida just ecstatic about the direction of Orlando, which for a while there was a question whether they'd even remain yes. in the state of Florida. Carmelo Anthony at the free throw line with the United States leading 80 to 44. You think about the journey of Carmelo Anthony after the 2004 Olympic experience, Bill, which was very impropitious for him. He was seen and perceived, true or otherwise, as a bit of a malcontent in Athens while playing for Larry Brown on that team. But the following year after they were eliminated by the San Antonio Spurs, the day after, remember this story, he called up Steve Hess, the Denver Nuggets strength and conditioning coach, said, Steve, take me out on a run. They went and worked out. He got his body in shape. He dropped about 15 pounds, and he has been a different Carmelo Anthony ever since, really peaking, maybe, maybe, maybe not, with the world championship performance last summer. Well, there were nothing but problems on that Athens Olympic team, on the 2002 Indianapolis World Championship team, which is why... They have come with a whole new program. You put Jerry Colangelo, the master administrator, in charge of the big picture. And things are completely different now. Inside off the inbound pass. Virgin Islands forced to basically take every shot from outside. They're not getting anything near to the cup. Here's Anthony on the move. Mark, what happens is that you've got the great shot blocker back there in Dwight Howard. And he doesn't have to guard his man. And so the other guys on, on the United States team, they're just out on the perimeter. And they're just daring the Virgin Islands to drive to the hoop. But they know they don't want to get packed or roofed. So 
they're just <laughs> pulling the trigger against the, the hand in their face and the duress, it, and it's just not falling whatsoever. And Carmelo Anthony just working so determined to get to that hoop and finish, get to the trip to the free throw line. The Three Stooges defense, though, unable to slow Carmelo down. Is that like a matchup zone defense? What, the Three Stooges yes. defense? No, that's where you poke him in the oh, eyes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Frank Elgar with the foul. I, I don't know if you're old enough to, <laughs> to have watched the Three Stooges. I remember <laughs> Larry Curley and Mo. 5.17 to go here in the third quarter of play. The United States in the lead. Carmelo Anthony, the high scorer for the United States with 21 points. Michael Red did an outstanding job in the first half for the United States. He had 15 points all coming in the first quarter of play as Tayshawn Prince comes in for Mello. Tayshawn Prince, one of two Detroit Pistons on the squad. And While we have a little lull in the action here, I'd like to just give our best wishes to the Van Bredikoff family because Butch Van Bredikoff, the legendary coach, passed away today at 84 years of old. I mean, this was a guy who was still coaching at 71 when he went back to Hofstra, but 13 different head coaching positions, including a high school coach at 61 years of age. He played four seasons for the Knicks. Butch Van Bredikoff, he coached Bill Bradley, Wilk Chamberlain, Elgin Baylor, Jerry West, Pistol Pete Maravich. He made this world a better place, and we are the worse off with his passing. Well said, Bill. Chauncey Billups knocks down the three ball. The United States in control. LeBron James with an education in elevation. Back with more. Eighty-six to forty-four with four fifty to go in the third quarter. And uh, why not smile, Amari Stoudemire? His team up big time here. I was a little concerned coming into this game that the Virgin Islands might have trouble scoring the thirty points that the Texas Rangers put up in baseball <laughs> last night but they have come alive here and, and the United States uh, really has not played as well in the second and third quarters that they played in the first quarter and, and a major problem in this seven-year decline of USA basketball nice 12 nothing run for the United States in the last three minutes has been that in the tournaments they generally start really well. Another turnover for the Virgin Islands. They start really well, the United States does, and then they get overconfident, they get complacent, they get lax in their preparation, and things start to slip and slide in the downward slippery slope, and all of a sudden you're playing against Greece, or you're playing against Lithuania, or you're playing against Argentina with a great point guard who gets hot, controls the flow, and that's why Jason Kidd and Chauncey Billups have been added this year, to not let any of that creep in. They've played with conviction from the opening tip in both games so far. A good sign if you're looking at a trend. Stoudemire missing the easy one underneath. Won't miss that one, though. The stick back for Amari Stoudemire. It's 90-44. to Stoudemire, you think about where and how far he has come in the last year coming off of Two knee surgeries in a little over a year with the microfracture surgery on one knee and then had a cleaning out process, a scope on the other knee, unable to play a year ago at this time because of the rehab pro process. And it's a little slow to bounce back from that second one, Bill, but now looking very fine. And with the United States doubling up plus the score on the Virgin Islands, Amari Stoudemire can work on his skill game as opposed to the power game. And that's really the next step for both Dwight Howard and Amari Stoudemire, is to get to that point. And th their role models offensively should be Akeem Olajuwon and Kevin McHale. Th they don't have the, the, the overwhelming size that Shaq, Kareem, Wilt had. And they need to get to that point where that, hey, when they're going to play against Shaq, because Shaq, I, I would anticipate Shaq's going to play, what, four or five more years? He's got three years left on his contract in Miami and, and said that he's going to play them out. So they're going to have to be able to ultimately beat him, to try to beat Tim Duncan, who's going to play a, a lot more years. And so if they want to be the champions, they're going to have to get that game that Olajuwon and McHale had, which was total skill and able to beat guys who were bigger, stronger, faster, could jump higher. And that's when you know you're really playing ball. Great alley. Nice over. play up top, but unable to convert. As Cuthbert Victor 
Here's Kobe Bryant, kicks it out to Mike Miller. Nice ball movement. They waved that one off with the offensive foul. Not often you see Mike Miller put it on the deck. He had an open jump shot and elected to drive instead. Mike His ankle sure. certainly appears to be fine. There yes. Was a, uh, serious concern by the coaching staff and an easy play to call with the left arm clear out. Sixth man of the year a couple of seasons ago in the NBA. Eighth year with the Memphis Grizzlies. Mike Miller has played in Orlando before being traded to Memphis. On the baseline, it's Cuthbert Victor again, fouled going to the bucket. Saw Mike Krzyzewski there on the sidelines a few moments ago, and Bill, this is not the first time that he has been uh, involved with coaching the USA men's senior national team. He's been an assistant coach prior to taking over as the head coach last season for the world championships and I had an interesting discussion with one Kenny Anderson former NBA player who played on the 1990 world championship team for the senior men's national team and that interestingly enough was the last time that it was a group of collegians that would represent the United States because uh, Kenny was telling me he very much remembers losing to the Croatians that summer uh, in the Goodwill Games and in the World Championships. And after that, it, it was on. That's when, uh, you know, as you mentioned the name yesterday, Boris Stankovic was instrumental in giving birth to the whole Dream Team concept. Basket bucket good by Amari Stoudemire. Well, that 1990 team in the FIBA World Championships, they took the bronze medal with a 6-2 record. But Krzyzewski has coached them all. He's coached the Olympic Festivals, the World University Games, the Goodwill Games, the Pan American Games, the FIBA Championships, America Championships like this one a uh, uh, long, long time ago. He was an assistant coach on the initial Dream Team. Miller off the mark, rebounded by the Virgin Islands and Akeem Francis. And, and, and all the while winning three NCAA Championships at Duke, making it to the Hall of Fame already, and being the winningest coach in terms of number of games won career-wise in the history of the NCAA tournament. Nice move by Mike Miller, tapped out of bounds by the Virgin Islands, but let's make no doubt about it. If he's not able to deliver a gold medal in the Olympics, his reputation is on the line here, Mike Krzyzewski, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> and that's the beauty of basketball, is that <laughs> everyone's reputation is on the line every single game. Stoudemire with the rebound off the red miss, and Amari Stoudemire taking it strong to the bucket. And will earn himself a couple of free throws. Stat is the nickname for Amari Stoudemire. Standing tall and talented, a self-professed and self-made manufactured acronym and quite accurate I would say. Aaron Williams checking into the ball game with 106 to go in the third quarter. Utah a team that made such great progress last year. Haven't really heard much about them this summer other than them allowing Derek Fisher to go to the Lakers which was stunning to me because the, you know Derek Fisher says one day I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm retiring from basketball to go and Take care of my ill daughter and then 10 days later signs with the Lakers, his old team, where he won three world champions or NBA champions. I think he wanted to, the goal was to look for an environment that was conducive for the best medical help. Shepard driving to the bucket is fouled, will get a chance for the three-point play, but Darren Williams really with a coming out part of this year in the backcourt for the Utah Jazz. Utah had that very fast start to the season, then kind of lost their steam a little bit. They incurred a bunch of injuries. Uh, Carlos Boozer, though, uh, mostly unlike the previous two seasons, played most of the season, uh, able to stay healthy most of the way. And before bowing out to the San Antonio Spurs, the Utah Jazz are serving notice that, that they'll be set. They're on the right course and path for the next few years. Well, they did get Morris Almond, a great uh, uh, young player, to try to replace Derek Fisher. But Derek Fisher is a championship-level player. And a big question, what... What are you going to do with Andre Karolenko? And will Memo Core be able to, to play at the at the championship level the way he plays at the regular season level where he was a well-deserved all-star this past season for the first time in his career? Mari Stoudemire finishing off the alley-oop on the pass from Tayshawn Prince. 94-50, United States in control from the opening tip. 
The USA will have tomorrow off before taking on Canada Saturday afternoon on ESPN2. In a day game. And that's going to be a problem, you think? <laughs> I, I prefer the day games. <laughs> Johnson Phillips again, out top. I like to go to bed early. There you go. That's that Southern California <laughs> upbringing. Get to bed early so you can get up and enjoy the next one. Training. Tayshawn Prince. Time winding down. Prince couldn't get the bank shot to go. And that's the end of the third quarter of play. 30 minutes in the books here at the FIBA Tournament of the Americas Championship 2007 from the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, in the middle of the desert. A place where perhaps the disembalming and disentombing of the gold medal hopes gets new life back after this. Back in Las Vegas, Nevada, the United States in control 94 to 50. Las Vegas, the site of Last year's NBA All-Star Game, and what a weekend that was. Uh, the fantastic it was. Kobe Bryant was the game's MVP, but uh, one of the other highlights, Bill, at the uh, celebrity game, I, you know, I've never seen Carrot Top on the basketball court. Really? They, yeah, yeah, he was there playing. Not old enough to have seen me play? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about the other Carrot Top. <laughs> okay, so the United States is on pace to set their scoring record for the most points ever in a FIBA championship competition. Kobe Bryant is getting a little bit of ice on the knee. We would expect that with that sign, we will not see him again tonight. But in 1992, the first time the NBA players were allowed into the Olympics, the the United States defeated Cuba 136 to 57, a 79 point victory. And that is the standard that was set early on. And we'll see if this squad tonight can come anywhere close. 94 to 50. It's interesting. You think back to the first play of Dream Team back in 92. And, you know, the stories are abound where when Magic Johnson was guarding a player from Lithuania at the Olympics, the Lithuanian players were yelling at the managers on the bench, take the picture, quick. <laughs> Things are changed. Magic, yeah. Yeah. Now they don't, they don't look at us the same way. 96 to 50. And that's because of the brilliance of Boris Stankovic and David Stern to realize that if they're going to grow the game globally, the Olympics, they should be for the best of the best. And the distinction between amateur and professionalism has totally disappeared. And you've got now... Yao Ming from China, E from China, Dirk Nowitzki, the MVP of the regulars, a beautiful pass, Michael Red. Oh. Red inside to Stoudemire and Stat coming alive. Amari Stoudemire with the bucket, 98 to 50. Foul going to be called against Chauncey Billups. And the big three tonight uh, getting in a little bit of work before getting their rest. Carmelo with 17 points, Kobe with six, pardon me, uh, 22 points. Kobe with nine and LeBron with eight. Well, Kobe Bryant only four shot attempts in 16 minutes. That's a remarkable stat in and of itself. One of the things State. that hurts the United States, Mark, is that when they're preparing for these tournaments in the, in the friendly games and scrimmages that they play, the other teams don't do them any favors because they don't come out and try to win the game. They don't come out and try to prepare the United States. They just come out and just sort of lay down. So there's, they don't play the zone defense. Well, how do you get a good look? How do you assimilate what you're going to see outside of the United States getting a select team? And it's still not the same. But that was a, a brilliant move again by Colangelo to figure that out, that the other teams weren't cooperating Red, the left-hander, using the right <laughs> on the throwdown. But in, in all the games we've done in the, in, over the decades uh, in international basketball, it, it, in the exhibitions, so many of the opponents, they come out and they play NBA-style basketball to try to get their game going, where the United States needs teams to play controlled, slow down, physical, zone defense, great point guard play, pick and roll. So they come into these tournaments and, granted, Venezuela and 
and the Virgin Islands don't have the talent, but the other good teams around the, the land, the, the, the Argentines, the, the Spaniards, uh, the Brazilians, uh, teams that actually have a legitimate chance of maybe, if things all break their way, have a chance to win, uh, they're coming out and, and saying, this is how we play this game, which is a totally different game for the United States NBA game. 7.18 to go. A, a blown layup by Miller inside, and it's tipping good. 7.11 to play. Mike Miller for three. And Miller showing no ill effects from that tweak of his ankle that he suffered yesterday against Venezuela. Knocks cool. down a three-pointer. But the way the game is different in the, in the international competition is that it's a more physical game, the zone defense, the almost complete emphasis on the point guard and three-point shooting, pick and roll, and then centers. Unlike what the United States has with Dwight Howard, Amari Stoudemire, and Tyson Chandler, uh, a more well-rounded, uh, less physically gifted players who play the high post game and shooting, passing, screening. Let me ask you this then, as LeBron hands it off to Darren Williams, Williams fires, comes up short, Chandler with the rebound. Why is it, though, that circa 1992 through 2000 the difference in the style between FIBA and NBA wasn't as much of a factor yet it seems to be now because the United because the other teams have elevated their games because of the exposure and all these youngsters around the world who were turning on their television sets and then saying wow did you see Michael Jordan did you see Magic Johnson did you see Shaquille O'Neal and Akeem Elijah wanted David Robinson did you see Vince Carter and Jason Kidd and Kevin Garnett? And then they go out and they start practicing. And then as their game comes up and the decline of some of the skills in the United States with so few of the top players ever going to college and learning all the different things that the great historical players have done. And uh, There's Tyson Chandler uh, landing turning on LeBron's yeah. foot there. And we can only hope that he's okay. And Byron Scott, uh, I'm sure... Uh, with his heart in his throat right now. He's thinking shut him down for the rest of the night. 5.38 to go, 106 to 54. I'm Mark Jones along with Bill Walton. Las Vegas, Nevada, the site for the Tournament of the Americas. The United States moving the ball well all night long, deep into the Vegas night. But what a 21 points now from Michael Red in the ball game. The length of the court right down the seam of the retreating defense. LeBron James, he has been superb throughout. He and, he and Carmelo Anthony and Michael Redd have been the best player tonight. I guess his ankle's okay after that block. <laughs> Tyson Chandler. But, but generally, you want to keep those blocks in the uh, yes, everybody goes crazy uh, yelling here in the, in, 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 the, in, in the stands, but all it does is give the Virgin Islands a chance to run a set play out of bounds. Learn from Bill Russell, the master teacher. Under five minutes to go. The United States will have tomorrow off and then take on Canada on Saturday. Here's Michael Red inside. Nice feed to Miller, and Miller had it blocked at the rim. Wild play by the Virgin Islands. Things a little bit sloppy right now, and that's being nice. Miller finishes it off with the slam. You know, I'm going to bring this up, Bill. If but first, an you know, you've got a timeout. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the Virgin Islands are falling apart. I'm sorry, Mark. We'll get to your point right when we come back. Natural segue to a break. We'll be back with more right after this. With a berth to the Olympics and most recently Australia defeating New Zealand recently to qualify and punch their ticket so now four teams are in China Spain Iran joining Australia and one of the reasons why the Americas tournament gets two qualifiers is because of the expected domination of the United States and they don't want to just automatically eliminate everyone else Every other region only gets one automatic berth. The Americans get two. There's Darren Williams with the steal and great hustle to run it down. Kicks it out to Michael Red. We're going to run a little offense. Darren Williams of the Utah Jazz, the third string point guard on this team. But Jason Kidd is 
really taken Williams under his wing and taught him some of the subtle nuances of international basketball. And Williams cashes in with a baseline jumper from downtown. The coaching staff for the United States are very impressed with the overall game of Darren Williams. The ability to shoot the mid-range shot, that long one from the corner, uh, but also the rebounding, the defense for Darren Williams. And I would like to correct myself that Europe, because of their historical dominance, they also get two automatic bids. So, like the United States in this tournament, all you have to do in the Europe qualifier is make it to the finals, and then you're automatically seeded into the Olympics. Under three and a half minutes to go. Tayshawn Prince missing at the other end. Shot from downtown by Edwin off the mark. Rebounded by Michael Red and Bill. A point that I was getting to before we went to commercial. Somehow along the way, European style or international style has become equated with, perversely I think, team basketball. Yet NBA is somehow conjures up images of one-on-one -on -one break break them down basketball if i'm an nba player and i've heard echoes of this sentiment it, it comes as an affront and it's a little insulting frankly to them perception becomes reality and what's happened is the nba game has gone more to the guy who has the ball is looking to make his own play as opposed to the point guard like a steve nash trying to set somebody up like a, Le a lenny wilkins or a magic johnson now the United States coaches, uh, particularly a Greg Popovich, has used that as a motivational tool over the years. Say, hey, look, uh, who are we? How did we get here? And where are we going? As uh, everyone yucking it up on the bench and uh, <laughs> well, wait, back in, waiting for the crowd to sing happy birthday to Kobe. Back in 2003, when the United States drilled Argentina in this tournament of the Americas, beat them by 33 points in the finals. They were frankly tired of listening to Popovich, I'm told, uh, talk about how well the Argentines played as a team and they really put it on Argentina as a result. And that's the same Argentina team that next year in 2004 went on to win the gold medal, due in part to the fact that only three players from the American team ended up making the trip to Athens because of quote unquote personal and security reasons. But that United States team in Athens, they lost three games. They lost the opener to Puerto Rico, where Carlos Arroyo just torched them. Then they lost to Lithuania, where Sharunas Jasakevichis lit them up. And then you had Manu Ginobili, who is, when he's on his game, as great a lead player as there is in the world today. Pass out of bounds. Red trying to get it over to Miller. We're going to take a timeout. With and the clock I, winding down. And Jason Kidd and Chauncey Billup were not there right now. Back with more after this. Well, the largest margin of victory ever for the United States team is 79 points dating back to 1992. Right now, they lead by 61 points. And that would come up as the second largest margin of victory ever. Panama lost by 60 to the U.S. That stands as number two right now. The margin in this one, 61. As the gap has narrowed between the United States and the rest of the world. Although you can't tell by the score. No. <laughs> but, the, but the Virgin Islands are ranked 38th in the world. And things are going to change this weekend playing Canada and Brazil back to back in the afternoon day games where they'll yeah, they're number 15 and 16, Canada and Brazil. And, but in, in the 92 Olympics, the average margin of victory was 44 points per game. Four years later, it's down to 32 points per game. Four years later in Sydney, it's down to 21 points per game. And then in Athens, four years later, and just three years ago, the average margin of victory, even though the United States lost three games there, was four and a half points per game. But the yeah. times, they're changing. You better start swimming or you'll sink like a stone. Tyson, Tyson Chandler. Chandler with a nice follow off to Tayshawn Prince miss with 34 seconds to go. And there's a theory out there still, Bill, and, and some people buy into it, some don't, that if our 
Well, if 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 Vince Carter were on the team, on this team here. Yes. If if uh, and no slight to the guys that are on this team right now, but Vince Carter, Tracy McGrady, Kevin Garnett, Shaquille sure. O'Neal still a force. How much different would it be? There are those that believe it would be like the old days. There are those that believe that the world is caught up a little bit still. These players are more than <laughs> capable of setting all the records they wanted. I'm to. with you. It, it, it still comes down to you have to respect the opposition. The United States, they came out on the opening tap and got it done, set a tone early, and able to just cruise to an easy. The United States puts a dollar 23 on the board against the Virgin Islands, the second largest margin of victory ever for Team USA. As the United States improves now to 2 and 0 oh, and sit atop the standings in group B. As we update the standings and Brazil at 1 and 0. Oh, they've only played one game, Canada at 1 and 1. Canada the next opponent for the United States. That game on Saturday at 3 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN2. The Virgin Islands dropping to 0-1. Venezuela still winless. We'll be back with more to wrap it up right after this. Stick around. And welcome back, everyone, to the Thomas and Max Center. The United States defeating the Virgin Islands 123 to 59. They were in control. From the opening tip, the United States improving to 2-0. They'll have tomorrow off and come back Saturday against Canada. Time now for the higher player and play of the game. A lot to choose from. Dwight Howard gets it going, and then Michael Red beautifully sets it up for LeBron, who had so many throwdowns. LeBron James tonight, just eight points in 18 minutes. Kobe Bryant, a very quiet nine points, but it was Michael Red with 22 points in only 19 minutes, and Carmelo Anthony always atop the leaderboard in points, 22 points in 17 minutes for Carmelo. Tayshaun Prince, 13 rebounds, impressive performance by the United States tonight. And one of the stats not shown up there, the United States, Bill Walton, shooting 15 of 30 from three-point territory, something that uh, has been a bit of a concern in past seasons with the United States senior men's national team, but not tonight and not yesterday when they shot 38% from downtown. The United Carmelo States Andy played their best basketball in the first quarter tonight, and then after that they just cruised, and it was a series of highlight films. Carmelo Anthony was blistering early on. Kobe Bryant met no resistance the few times he did go to the hoop on his birthday. And Carmelo Anthony, <laughs> LeBron James, everybody getting involved. Jason Kidd, how much fun to play with him. I know what Kobe Bryant got for his birthday. He got the Virgin Islands as a present. The final score, 123 to 59. Join us Saturday afternoon as the United States takes on Canada 3. There's been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader of sports. For Bill Walton, our entire gang, I'm Mark Jones saying good night from Las Vegas with a little string music to send you on your way.